Let's begin by looking at this polynomial inequality and discover where its boundary points are at. So I'm gonna set it up um, with all my terms on one side. And first of all, look for where would it be solved at zero. So first of all, we see if it will factor. It doesn't factor. Well, it does factor, but it factors into some irrational numbers. So the best way to do that will be with the help of the quadratic. So a would equal four, b is a two, c equals a negative one. So minus b plus or minus b squared minus four times a times four ac times negative one all over two times a. All right, if I put those in correctly, let's go ahead and just simply reduce. So minus two plus or minus four plus 16 all over eight. 20, um, okay, so that does reduce. So minus two plus or minus four root five all over eight, four root five is the same thing. Well, nope, not four right root five, two root five. The reason why again, root 20 is the same thing as root four times root five, and then root four becomes a two. So that's two root five. I can factor out a two out of each of those terms. So I'm left with a negative one plus or minus root five all over a four. So there are my boundary points. I have two boundary points here. Um, the two boundary points, let me just go ahead and mark them up a little better, is one, negative one, plus a root five over a four. And the other boundary point is a negative one minus a root five over a four. One plus, negative one plus root five over four is approximately, what will my black box say? 0.3. And this one is approximately, I'll find it here in a second, negative point eight. Notice I said approximately. With these rational roots here, that isn't exact, but when I started putting in a calculator and try to give me a specific number on the number line, which is recognizable to us, the numbers become inexact. They become approximate. So there we have our two boundary points. So draw a number line. Find the boundary points. One boundary point is 0 0.3. And it's also an inclusive boundary point. So wherever 0 0.3 is at, right about there, I'm going to definitely fill it in or put a hard bracket on it once I know which direction it goes. And then likewise with negative 0 0.8 right there. It's also an inclusive point because it's a greater than or equal, so I'll fill in a hard point that as well. So what I hope you see is I have three sections to check. I have three segments. I have this segment over there, this segment here in the middle, and this segment all the way out there. So from negative infinity to negative point, what is that, zero eight, to positive three, positive point three, to positive infinity. I got three sections within this graph. I want to test a test point now in each one to figure out if it's a solution or not. So let's choose some easy points to begin with. Uh, one, which is in the section over here. So I'm going to choose that test point, which represents all the points within that section. And so that will be four times one squared is less than or equal to one minus two times one. Four is less than or equal to one minus two, which is a negative one. Is four less than negative one? No. So that tells me all the points within this section are false. So that's not part of my solution. Let's try this test point. In the second section right here, I'll try zero. Love zero. So four times zero, now let's just write it out. 
4 times 0 squared, is that less than or equal to 1 minus 2 times 0? Is 0 less than or equal to 1? That is true. So it tells me 0 is a solution, which also tells me all the points within that section are solutions. And then let's just do one more test point. Um, here's 1. There's 1. So let's go ahead. I guess point 3 is farther over there, isn't it? Let's try 1 as a test point. Oh, I guess I did 1 here earlier. I should have chose negative 1. So let's do, let's, let's, let's do negative 1. That's 4. One, eight, 1, so it's 4 less than or equal to 1 minus a negative 2 which is a three, is that true? That is false. So the test point negative one is false. The test point one is false. The test point zero is false. So my first time I did that, I was really doing the test point of negative one or a positive one. That was false, so it tells me this section over here is untrue. The second section with the test point of zero is true. And then to verify the point with negative one, which is over here, uh, is false. So graphically then, my solution set is just that little section within there. And how would I describe that as a solution set? Um, I would use interval notation and that would tell me it's from point, well, we can use these numbers because these are the exact numbers. And so the point three, the negative point eight, so it's from negative one minus root 5 over 4 to the other point, which is negative 1, plus root 5 over 4. Those points are also solutions, so I will put hard brackets around that. And this is representative of interval notation because it's describing a section of the graph where my solutions are at.